I know you've been waiting for Election Day and, and you've been watching all the races. Who's going to take control? Is Nancy Pelosi going to be the next speaker? Are Republicans in the House going to defy the traditional off-party um, tromping that, that the party in power usually takes as an off-year elections? You remember in 1994, the Republicans took the Congress away, the House away from Bill Clinton and Democrat dominance for over 40 years. The Tea Party wave in 2010 did the same thing where we won races that even Republicans didn't think we could win. So we, we know what happens historically. Historically, the president and the party in power um, get hammered in the midterms. But I think it might be different this year. But I'm not going to make any predictions because by the time you see this show, you've probably already started watching the results and, and we'll see what happens. But I want to argue a little bit about, about voting generally and, and whether or not we should do it. I'm not one of these guys that sort of zombie-like votes the party line just because the party bosses told me to do so. I never have been. I've always looked for candidates that are actually worth supporting, um, candidates that, that seem to reflect the values that we talk about on this show. And in that sense, I'm even agnostic about political party. In this cycle, we have looked at a number of candidates, some of whom um, will probably win, some of whom might win, some of whom probably don't really have a chance of winning at all. But the process that, that we go through here on Kibbe on Liberty is different. I'm looking for someone that's authentic. I'm looking for someone that actually seems to want to do the things that they're telling us they want to do when they're soliciting our vote. And we've spent a good part of 2018 talking to some of these candidates. And, and we're gonna create sort of a special watch list for people that care just about liberty, not about control of Congress, not about, about who said this about President Trump or the other, but who believes in liberty and who's doing something about it. These candidates are the one, some of the ones that we've found, and I'll leave Thomas Massey and Justin Amash and, and Mike Lee and Rand Paul aside. We've talked about them a lot on this show. But here's some candidates you probably don't know about that you probably should know about. Um, Nick Sarwak, who's running for mayor of Phoenix as, as a libertarian. He also happens to be the chairman of the Big L Libertarian Party, and he has some opinions about how you should vote. Uh, Travis Irvine, who is running for governor in Ohio as a libertarian. He's running against a very washed up and recycled Republican has been wannabe named Mike DeWine, who I think has been in office since uh, Abraham Lincoln created the Republican Party. I'm not sure about that. We'll fact, maybe, Logan, maybe we should fact check that. And the Democrat in the race in Ohio is, um, he, he's called, uh, uh, the Republicans are calling him a communist, but I, I guess he's sort of from the Bernie Sanders wing. It's exactly what Ohio needs right now, is a socialist to, to clean up that economy. Uh, we're going to hear from Denver Riggleman, who's running in Virginia 5 against a, a very progressive left-wing uh, Leslie Cockburn. Uh, that Virginia 5 race is actually one of the races that will determine whether or not the Republicans hold the U.S. House of Representatives. Laura Ebke, Nebraska State Senator, who has been a Republican. She just switched to the Libertarian Party because she was tired of the party bosses telling her that she had to vote the party line simply because it was a party line. She usually agrees with the Republicans, but, but she thought that she would think for herself. Crazy, isn't it? Eric Brakey is running for Senate in Maine against Angus King, who is a reliable left-wing vote for the Democrats in the U.S. Senate. Matt Gertler, uh, Georgia House District 8, um, he's going to win his race because his race was in the primary. He had the audacity to vote against higher spending in a Republican-controlled legislature, so naturally, Republicans went after him. That's the Republican Party. Joel Baumgar is a conservative libertarian Republican in Mississippi House Di District 58. He also happens to be the author of a medical cannabis initiative that we will see in, in, in Mississippi in 2020. These are all really interesting candidates, um, and I, I consider them the farm team, the ones that five, 10 years from now are gonna be running for US Senate, they're gonna be running for president, they're gonna be changing the world, but they gotta win this election first. So check out this, this, this 
uh, montage, this beautiful montage of all these, these, these beautiful candidates talking about things you actually care about.